And so I'd say that was like the progression of how it really went from theory and like common sense to a holistic program, I guess, that we're trying to attack on all sides. Gotcha. Yeah, I think the quadruple amputee video is like what really moved me because similarly, after you see that, it's just like, oh, this there has to be some explanation for how this person is moving. Right. Um, and then the legs being kind of a force multiplier makes a ton of sense. And to your point, I think observing athletes in action, right, is what really helps solidify some of these things, whether it's watching Usain Bolt run or other elite sprinters, right? We have this right. traditional um, mental model of how biomechanics should look. Um, and if people aren't moving like that, but they're also the best in the world, like there's reason behind that. The right. body is not, not dumb and it tends to find more efficient strategies, right? So completely agreed. I think from speaking with you and Walsh and other people, like in people in action is is really important. But I'd like to dive in a little bit more on the idea of the spine not being a straight rod. So that's something you spoke about with um, whether it's spinal health or having traditional or more uh, normal, let's call it spinal mechanics. Why does it not being a straight rod matter? Like what is what is it about that piece of it that really allows the spinal engine theory to, to work? Yeah. I So I think it's like a super overlooked, but basic principle of like human beings in our anatomy. Like if you're just thinking about like, when you're just like rolling around thinking about your spine or thinking about bracing or anything, you usually just think like straight down. There's a rod straight down through our body, you know, just neutral. Um, but that's not how the spine is at all. There's there's obviously a natural S curvature to it. Um, and if you think about what if you think about anything like straight, like I think maybe I was thinking about a ruler, maybe let's just say you have a ruler, you're sitting in class, you have a ruler and you, and you side bend the ruler. It's just going to, it's just in a side bend, right? It's just going to move in one plane. Um, if you, if you side bend, it's just going to move in the frontal plane. Um, you're not going to have any rotation per se. But if you think about a curved rod, so like the best, I was thinking about this and I was like, if you put your fists on top of each other and then you tip one fist slightly forward over the other, because this, think about this is how our vertebrae are. So mm -hmm. if you tip one over the other to create a little bit of a curve, whether that's like, imagine it being flexion, and then all you do is you side bend the top fist to the left you can see that actually what happens is you are purely side bending to the left, but because it's already dumped forward or, or it's curved forward and you side bend left, you can see the top corner of the top fist actually tips down into the right. So that would be like a really basic explanation of like what is happening at our vertebrae as we side bend. So because of the because of the natural curve of the spine and the segments on top of each other, when you side bend, it actually induces uh, rotation. And so really the big thing here is um, this motion of rotation ends up propelling us through space. Like we, we move in three dimensions. So if... It's why the, I guess if, if you just would think about a conventional model of like straight rod and our legs are springs that just move us forward, then we would really only move in the sagittal plane. Like we would only move front to back. If, if our, if you imagine two springs attached to your body that are just pushing you forwards in space, there would be no rotation. So with the curvature of the spine, that it just allows us to side bend and this side bend induces rotation of the spine. And essentially this rotation creates torque that helps move our trunk and our pelvis to propel us forwards in space. And so I think that's really like a basic concept of human movement that is essential to what's kept us at the top of the food chain forever. Like we're, well, I mean, it's obviously one of many things, but if, if it's all if if life is really basically all about conservation of energy for survival, we need to figure out how to how to conserve energy 
better than everyone else in order to migrate, adapt to weather patterns, find food, et cetera. So that ability of rotation at the spine that helps drive the pelvis and trunk in opposing directions to move forward, instead of us using purely eccentric, concentric muscle action of like the legs or, th- or something like that of, of muscles that's super energy, it, it costs a lot of energy. The rotation allows us to actually utilize more connective tissue, fascial networks, more elastic energy, rather than just like thinking about your legs as a spring and you're just pushing, your, your springs are powering you through the ground if that makes sense. For sure. Yeah. I, I think something that's really important about this is it's it's radically different than the model that we had before, right? It's right. the traditional the model. And it kind of goes to the importance of really diving in and trying to understand what's happening at a biomechanical level, because even you know, understanding that people are all individuals and they're going to move differently and everyone has their own unique solution. Right. There are certain principles that we just can't, um, beat right like the body right. is always going to want to not fall we're always going to want to breathe right, right. Like certain fundamental things that we can't control that are happening right now for everyone that's listening